hello again struck club today and I'm doing second part of my stream after having my dinner um, and yeah it's a stream about me <laughs> gearing up farming for gear um, for that uh, basic attack uh, build it's not a basic attack build yet I'm still using chaotic strikes because uh, it's easier to farm with it but yeah I'm trying to farm uh, certain items I think I need three more items actually four more items the doom pipe the cosmic helmet, the cosmic breastplate, and uh, the cosmic uh, boots. So yeah, the zealot train is still in the process of getting geared up. Uh, with these rates, it doesn't seem like I'm gonna have the 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 build ready for today, unless it starts dropping uh, the, the things I need. It doesn't seem like uh, today I'm gonna have all the skill points and the build would be ready. If that's the case, uh, well, uh, I'm I'm gonna consider not making the build video if it doesn't drop me the breastplate uh, and the helmet. I don't care about the boots as much. But the breastplate and the helmet I really need for all the skill points. Otherwise the build would feel so incomplete if I don't get those extra, I guess, 6 skill points <laughs> that I can save up uh, from from getting the the Realm Master set stuff. I got a lot of uh, legendaries with my gear bundles, but they were kind of not really the ones I needed. But it's still better than not getting any. So I'm going to put those items uh, for now, maybe in some storage somewhere, just so I've got them there. This one I needed and I'm happy to have gotten it. Really happy to have gotten that one. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, I need to put some stuff somewhere, maybe... Maybe this one can go here. Physical damage, this one can go here. Conductor skills, okay, now we need boots. Empty boots, empty boots, this can go here. Okay, well did I put boots everywhere? When did I fill up those storages so quickly? I'm eating through storage space uh, like there's no tomorrow. Okay, let's consider removing this one. It's Wobby, it's, it's fine for a Wobby item, but let's get rid of it. Alright, like that I've got some room to work with. Let's keep farming, let's keep doing what I was doing. Going for the Unique's Infamous map. Oh, there we go, Unique's Infamous. <coughs> it's waiting for me. It's waiting for me to get all that uh, fame and all those uh, contract levels. Okay, uh, I'm ready I think. I was just checking uh, Discord quickly to see if, if I've missed any messages while I was having dinner. Come on, come on. Do I really need to kill all the goblins? <laughs> Nice. 
I'm gonna do as usual up one side down the other side and then back up uh, through the middle this is how I clear those layout maps sorry I muted myself to sneeze I'm not sure <laughs> what's happening but yeah I ate some spicy food so something spicy could have gotten there Here. Maybe, maybe just dropping uh, late. No, it doesn't seem to be coming to unique. Oh, there we go. A delayed drop uh, for that one. Would have been surprised if it didn't give me one here. Let's go this way. Another one. I'm gonna group them like this together. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Nice pop chance, evasion and gear work. Mm. I'm gonna have to sacrifice it. I mean, I can't keep every single item. It wasn't bad, but I'm not stacking gear work. Right now the drops we get are actually not uh, that much from drops. Rather are from... From the gear bag bundles, so... I'd much rather have more bundles. Getting more drops, yeah, it will increase the number of legendaries I get overall. But with the current nerf to drop rates... Uh, I'm not relying on my gear coming from drops rather than the, the gear bundles. It's weird to be that way in a water game to not rely on wood dropping, uh, but to rely on getting wood from from some gear bundles. A very weird way of uh, shifting uh, where people get gear from. But it's not bad. I like uh, systems uh, where you get rewarded by doing stuff. Let's see. 
Hopefully it doesn't keep giving me the same stuff over and over again like so far. It's been doing that a lot. Some items I've got on 4, 3, 5, actually not 5 times. I think the most I've gotten was the the 4 times getting uh, the centrifuge or was it 5 times? Can't remember but in any case I've already gotten multiple items 3-4 times and maybe one of them was 5 times already. It's weird to be getting the same legendary drops uh, all the time without uh, any variety. By the way, the new pets, I'm not finding the new pets and I've spent a lot of time doing 60, uh, level 60 plus content, level 60 enemies and maps. It's weird, not getting the new pets, uh, they probably made them rarer to get than, than they were a few weeks ago. Okay, how many? We got 13 contract levels with this. Should I open this gear bundle? Just like that. Just one. And uh, yet again, a fucking Sneku stick. Seriously, game, why? Why do you keep giving me the same stuff? I really want to be making builds, but the game just doesn't want me to make builds. It doesn't want me to keep testing uh, stuff. See, the quicker it is for me to finish a build, the quicker I would move on to the next one and uh, do some testing of other things, of other skills and be able to provide some feedback if I find something wrong there. Honestly Fazir, give me better drop rates. Or not better, more varied drop rates. I'm fine getting as many legendaries as I do. I just want more variety instead of more of the same 5 items. 90% of the time it's those 5 items uh, every time. Come on. There's gotta be a good map somewhere. There was a gauntlet infamous map, interesting, but I'd much rather go for uniques instead of um, the infamous. I don't think there's gonna be infamous uniques anymore. So I can probably just do whatever whatever uniques I find. Uh, there were uniques at 5. You can probably do those, the uniques at 5. Cause they're gonna be quick, this is gonna be quick. Uh, Wait, it wasn't at 5? 6 maybe? 6. Unix at 6. Okay. Let's keep going. Go to the dead end first and then come back there. In fact, there's no unique here.
Come on, come on. Which way? I think this way is the the dead end. Yes, perfect. Oh, and they've silenced my chaotic strikes. There we go. How many more? One more and two more from the quest items. And we're done with the quest. Alright, let's try and find some more greeny greens. Put one spawn here. I guess not today. What about here? Maybe in this corner. Oh, one more. Two more. Nice. Okay, let's kill it. Probably gonna be a few more greens in this map. Okay, that's that doesn't seem like the dead end. Let's go to the dead end first. There we go, one one unique here. Okay, we've got some stuff. We've got some fame this uh, this map already, and quite a bit as well. Let's uh, get them all spawned up. Clear out the the dead end, and then move on to the rest of them. here I think that was all the greens we can get in this map I thought we we're gonna get another one Here we go.
Some respectacles. I'm always happy to get respectacles. Always happy to get some respectacles. Because there will be some build changing eventually for for heroes and stuff. Keeping the same relic and uh, class, but changing builds. Uh, not for this one soon, because I've already got a slammer with the chaotic strikes. And now with the seismic charger 2.0 slash zealot train, it will be interesting. Unfortunately, what I was expecting for the train to get modified by attack speed, it doesn't work. And casting speed also doesn't help the train attack faster. So I really wanted the train to be the zealot, uh, alongside me being the second zealot. But it's just gonna be me being a zealot attacking fast, the train will not be benefiting from the attack speed bonuses. Okay, more. We need more. If you think you can take it. Seen it before. If you think you can take it. And there's one unique, but not infamous. There's two uniques, so 26, 25. Let's remember 26 and 25. Okay, then let's remember 22. Seems like the better one to do. Don't want to go down, but okay, let's go down. Check what's here. Unique set 13, okay. Unique set 8. The one at 13 would be better, but this one's not gonna be as challenging because the other one's double HP. We can just uh, run through those. So at 8 uniques. Okay, let's do 8. Let's do 8. Which 2 though? I'm gonna go for this one. Movement speed, extra speed. Speedy stuff is good. They should really make the maze not be a single target. Because uh, it's not fair if the maze basic attack is single target and the sword isn't. And the differences in the damage uh, are not that big. This one is what? 225? Was the sword 150? I think the sword was 150% weapon damage. Can't tell you right now until I get one. There we go, sword. Let's see how much uh, percent damage. 75. Alright, well that's interesting. I'm, I'm noticing uh, that it's not 75 and uh, 225. Let's see. Four point five k. Four point five k with uh, without the buffs and debuffs and stuff. On an item that does. 3.6 in this map. So an item that this 1.7 should be doing uh, almost uh, two times less. I'm 
But look at how quick and how many it's hitting. 1600 is... 1600 seems to be the damage. Alright, le let me get the pet away. Just so it's not messing with my tests. What is the 985 and 965? 1600 seems to be... How much is the crit? So 2000 is the crits. Nine hundred eighty-five. Okay. I understand why it is the way it is, but okay. I wish the mace would be hitting more uh, faster at least. It could be still one uh, a single target item. Yeah, okay. If they wanted to do more damage, but a single target, it should at least hit as fast as the sword. It's not as fast as the sword. Basic attacks need a complete rework. Every single basic attack needs to be looked into uh, and rework to be a little bit more, I don't know, meaningful, impactful, whatever the, the right word would be. I would much rather see some nice combos and the third hit of the combo doing more damage maybe. Cause look at that, it feels so boring to play with basic attacks in this game. Even with attack speed stacking, This is 75% attack speed, this one, right now. If that's uh, with 75% attack speed, the mace is just tragic. And it's not 75, it's actually 101% extra attack speed. I guess there's a limit to how much attack speed we can get uh, before it caps. So I'm at 56% right now. This is 60. 60? Really? This get me to 55. So basically 25% attack speed equals 5%. Not 25. Is the base attack speed 50% and that's why this is happening? I've never done uh, that much testing on on this subject, on basic attack stuff and attack speed. You know, I used to do a lot of testing long ago in the alpha. Okay, let me check something. I'm gonna remove the attack speed here and see this is 30%. With this one, it's 56. So the cap, the, the, the limit attack speed is 60%. So I think right now that's terrible. That's terrible limit of 60. I don't think the weapon decides it. Why do I get 30% attack speed? Okay, here, 29.6. So if I remove this, and then I use this, and does this give me 25? 25, and let's use this 29, and boom, 55. And with this, we go to 60, and 60 seems to be the cap. That's so bad, such bad news uh, about attack speed. Because then, what's the point of uh, what's the point of having skills like this one, 50% attack speed, and then this one, 25% attack speed, when you can't even go to 75%, you can't even combine those two skills. Oh man, this makes no sense. 60% attack speed cap. And some items are clearly much, uh, much quicker than others. It's not hard to, to cap. It, it is definitely not hard to cap. I can get almost 60% with two items. In fact, you can get 60% attack speed with two items. See, this one gives me... 26% I can get it to 29.30 if I'm lucky and min max it this item gives me 29.6 that's almost half of the maximum attack speed I can cap it I can cap it without even using thousand volt burst and conjure electrode right now conjure electrode seems useless to me I wanted it here so I can go over that 50% and get that 75% attack speed. So right now, attack speed from items I probably don't need. If I can use this and this together, I'm gonna hit the limit. 
and uh, that extra 10% attack speed is not gonna be that much of a difference and keep in mind you've got Frenzy Blade you've got items like Frenzy Blade Frenzy Blade by itself gives you shitloads of attack speed it gives you uh, 5% for 5 seconds stacking 10 times so Frenzy Blade can give you 50% attack speed it doesn't go over the soft cap, I tested it, it doesn't go over the soft cap. The attacks were exactly the same. I'm gonna fill it up and show you. Let's fill up my electrode and show you, just so you can see what I mean. The number doesn't change and it doesn't seem to go uh, faster. I'm gonna even test Frenzy's blade too to see if I can get it over the cap so let's let's equip Frenzy's blade and let's leave my train here so right now with Frenzy's blade can I get over my current attack speed of of 56 I can go up to 60 and that's gonna be it, 60 and I'm not going uh, over 60. So let's use the electrode now. Does it seem a little bit faster? It doesn't seem faster to me when I use Conjure Electrode. Okay, let's change the weapon to something else. Let's equip a sword. See, this is the limit with the sword. With the sword, that's the limit. Pretty fast, if you ask me. Now, this is with the Electrode. See, it didn't change. Uh, when the electrode expired, it remained the same. So 60 hard cap cannot go over it. Uh, seems to be the case right now. Attack speed, uh, basic attack needs some loving. Basic attack are in urgent, dire need of some more loving and some reworks. And just to make them feel better. It, it feels tragic uh, right now going for basic attack stuff. You can't even stack a ton of speed to proc a ton of things. I mean, my whole idea about this build was to have very fast attack speed so I can be proccing a lot of uh, things uh, per second. That was my whole idea. Multiple attacks per second, uh, ideally with a sword, so you can hit more enemies, so you can proc more things um, with each hit. It just doesn't seem worth it to invest into basic attack all right enough messing around let's uh, just kill those here and uh, move on uh, let's go that way Actually, there might be an elite enemy here. We might want that fame. Let's see, kind of, kind of coded. Does poison shock burn and all have the same tick rate for damage on the dot? I think damage over time, uh, bleeding, poison, shock, and burn. Um, all have the same dot rate, the same ticking, but they have different stack limits. Poison stacks three times, all of them stack uh, up to one time and bleeding had a second type of bleed that used to stack up to four times. I'm not sure whether the, the bleeding that used to stack up to four times remained, but the dance of death, which used to be the old uh, ultimate on the blood drinker, 
uh, after the one of the reworks used to give you a new separate bleed that stacks four times on top of the other one that stacks one time. So you could stack one bleeding, then another bleeding for four stacks, then a poison for three stacks, then a burning for one stack, and uh, and what was the other one uh, that I'm forgetting? And a shocked for one stack. Not sure if those four stacks of bleeding now remain uh, on the ultimate, on the Dance of Death. They most likely kept it. Although I haven't seen poison stacking three times lately either. Did they remove this? The old coffin spirit, uh, hate to you, hate to you, old coffin spirit. Is this any good as ARPG? Well, that uh, varies from one person to the next. Uh, I've noticed uh, that this game is showing me how different the 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 things people want in an ARPG are. See, some people love this game, others hate it. Some people enjoy playing it uh, without saying it's a great game or anything like that. I'm one of those people. I think it's a great game, but not really uh, until until it gets bug fixes. I think it could be a great game, but right now isn't. I think right now it's a good game, but not a great game. It needs some work, it needs some rebalancing and polishing, it needs bug fixes, and it needs more content, more, more variety in the post-story activities. As well as changes to, to the enchanting system. I would like to see the ability to add sockets to items. I like to have an item that I can find that allows me to add a socket. I had that idea about turning Wivebound into a system with repair and using some sort of uh, consumable to repair items. Maybe the same item that repairs consumer and that repairs broken items could be used to make sockets. So you don't have to make too many consumables. I mean, there are so many, so many things uh, that this game could add to make itself better. I really like it, but I don't want to tell people, yeah, get the game, you're not going to regret it, because some people regret getting the game, some people refund it. I've had one of my viewers who used to watch me play all sorts of different games and play with me, he installed this game and then uninstalled it two hours uh, later, not even two hours, like 30, 30 minutes later he uninstalled it, he said it was running uh, terribly on his machine, even though it's a machine that can run Borderlands 3 and Destiny and stuff like that. So I guess <laughs> he just uh, installed it at a bad time when things were rubber bending and stuff like that. Not everyone enjoys the game, but um, believe me, there are people who love it. And I've been making content for this game since... When did I start? April April 2019. So a lot of, a lot of time has passed since I started making content and playing the game. And I love it. Um, I love how much the game has changed. If you have seen the alpha and compare the alpha, the different stages of alpha with the current stage of the game, with the current shape um, of it, you're gonna see that there's been so many changes. Alright, uh, I'm done with those. Let's go kill the boss. And the game has a very nice variety of classes and uh, subclasses. So, 4 classes and 5 subclasses. Every class can get every subclass, so that's 20, 20 archetypes. 20 archetypes that decide your class per subclass and then with that you have to make some sort of combos. There's right now the obvious meta builds for every class subclass combo and this is in beta early access beta it is early access but it is not alpha it is considered a beta i played games with access uh, early access alphas but this one is a beta indeed for example when wolson first started early access it was alpha i spent a lot of time playing the 
nice Wolsen Alpha. But then the Wolsen Beta came and the Wolsen Beta was a disaster. Uh, the Wolves and Beta become a little bit uh, more fun to play, close to launch, and when the game launched, a disaster times 2, or times 10 maybe, when it came to this balance and uh, lack of variety, lack of viable variety. Wolves and has a ton of variety now for builds, but the viable one is terrible. The grinding of how much XP you need in Wolves and terrible. The grinding of how how slow it is to get affinity, terrible. How badly balanced level 60 uniques are at level 90 heroes, or level etc. heroes and enemies, another terrible option. I know lately lately with ARPGs it's been so much miss and barely hit, barely hits. It's been mostly misses. Most games have been focusing on the wrong things. Most developers have been focusing on the wrong things as priorities. Hopefully this game doesn't end up getting crushed, but I think uh, it's happening. I think this game is also getting crushed. If they're planning on launching soon fall, if they want a fall launch, I don't think the game is ready for a fall launch. I see what shape it's in uh, right now. I don't know what's in the back end, uh, how far the development has went. But if this game really wants to launch this fall, I don't think it's ready for the masses. It's it's gonna be a disaster if this game launches uh, before December. <laughs> Even with December launch, I don't think uh, it's gonna have enough. But at least hopefully what it has becomes much better and much more appealing uh, by December if they if they decide to squeeze every last bit of uh, development before launching. Some people say fall lasts until the 21st of December. I mean, if we get that game in December, I'm fine. If we get that early December, right before the holidays, I think it would be a nice move. Grim Dawn is also my favorite ARPG in regards to many many things. Yeah, there are things I don't like in it, but uh, the majority of things in Grim Dawn I wish I would have in this game, in in its own version. I wish I would have the Crucible. I wish I would have the, um, the the equivalent of the Nemesis system. I wish I would have something like the Bastion of Chaos uh, and other uh, roguelike dungeons. I wish I would have secret bosses like the Ravager and the Avatar of Modgrogan and things like that. Things that just provide so much things, uh, so much variety to do after finishing the story. Wolfson was fun for the first two, three weeks until I started trying to get a variety of builds and saw how bad the variety was. Wolsen was fun in the alpha, um, believe me, in the alpha Wolsen was becoming uh, a game that was with open world, with waypoints, Diablo 2 style or Grim Down style, a big open world where you can just travel from one end of the map to the other, find some dungeons, go inside the dungeons and then exit back where you started and yeah, just travel if you want to travel with waypoints, if you want to walk from one end to the other and uh, the way they had Act 1 be like this. It was good, but again, they, they decided to use a very bad engine for ARPGs. CryEngine is terrible for ARPGs. It's an engine for shooters and, and they had problems with it. They had problems with it and had to, had to change many things uh, as a result of the CryEngine. It looks nice. It looks amazing. I mean, yeah, Walson probably has one of the best uh, looking animations and things, uh, especially the sound effects. Gotta give kudos to the sound team there, amazing s skill sound effects. Uh. But yeah, once they changed from alpha to beta, Wilson kind of lost its appeal. I mean, I would not have bought Wilson er early access during the beta. If if uh, if if I didn't buy during the alpha, I probably wouldn't have gotten it during the beta. Because the beta was just completely 
uh, what was the uh, the word bereft uh, completely it was whacking uh, it was whacking many many good things that I wish I would have it was very bare the battle was just super bare and this mobile system of traveling uh, to your story zones only once and not being able to go back to the zones you've uh, traveled was bad I mean, they're wasting resources by not reusing the maps uh, the maps from the story in Wilson because that's, that's such a wasted opportunity they've got so many nicely uh, designed maps and areas in the story but then those they're not reusing them other from the, m from the for the rifting for the expeditions or whatever it was called they're not uh, allowing the players to teleport back to those zones or to return to those zones for whatever reasons uh, in the end game you can return in the story mode, but uh, they separated the end game and story. And the end game is so bare, so bare. And the broken gem system, don't get me started in Wosen's broken gem system. I was so looking forward to rerolling item stats, but then you put three gems of one type, of type A, you get stats that don't even belong on this type of gem. I would put three green gems and reroll my weapon, and then I would get stats from a purple gem. Then I would put three purple gems and I would get stats from a red gem. Then I would put red gem and I would get uh, stats from a green gem. <laughs> they just... Why? Why Why were they advertising that we're gonna have so much control over re-rolling and min-maxing our items? And then the control was just... Uh, <laughs> not there. <laughs> it was just missing from the whole picture. Uh, I'm still hoping that Wosen would turn it around with uh, its first season. But if Wosen's XP rate remains the same shitty MMO XP rate, MMO XP, I mean, MMO XP doesn't belong in ARPGs. The way I see it. ARPGs are about reaching max level and then uh, experimenting and respecting and just farming for. Uh, for new builds and constantly changing and experimenting rather than spending uh, three months trying to reach level 90 because uh, apparently that's the right way to to play an ARPG you've played Moo Legend, I've played Moo Legend as well terrible pay to win it was an amazing game as a system but when I reached the end game I realized how badly pay to win and um, disbalanced it is by the way it's not dropping the firing pins pretty weird not sure what's happening I think this quest got bugged it's weird to not be dropping firing pins uh, but uh, have dropped the other stuff it might be a bug I think it's bugged at, at uh, 2 out of 10 it would have dropped so many more firing pins by now Uh, it seems like a bug to me. Let's restart it. It gave you a bean stuff. I'm not sure what you mean a bean stuff. In the end. Last Epoch is amazing, but Last Epoch also is trying to be part of Exile. Last Epoch, uh, in my idea, in my opinion, is going after the Path of Exile players, which is good for the game, because Path of Exile players are, are, are many. And if Last Epoch wants to be the next Path of Exile, so be it, but count me out of it. Uh, Last Epoch lost two out of my three characters. How does a game end up deleting two out of your three characters just out of nowhere and then the developers didn't uh, didn't apologize didn't say hey um, we've noticed some some people might have lost data um, you might want to do this and this and this to restore that data 
or here's uh, or here's a safe file with uh, heroes of each class take your pick that have done the story I don't want to have to lose my heroes without a warning I'm fine with wipes I'm fine with wipes and I've leveled up so many times in this game um, but knowing that there's gonna be a wipe so I was kind of expecting what's coming but yeah some things just uh, I, I'm not a fan of a game losing two out of my three characters and then not even at least saying uh, a sorry for that uh, unity I mean even my, my brother was uh, telling me that in his game he had some sort of uh, safe corruption problems with unity that he had to deal with But Last Epoch is nice. I, I really like the end game. I don't like the arena though. The arena is very, very uh, no life competition. You can't pause it. You can't continue later. You can do it like Crucible in Grim Down. It's just uh, the most basic uh, here's that round arena. Kill some enemies, uh, get the next level. Then kill some enemies, get the next level. Checkpoints every five levels. It's boring because it's not changing anything other than the enemy types and the and the, and the layout of the of the map. And that's it. And you have to keep doing that uh, endlessly. First of all, I don't like endless. If there's a real endless in a game, I don't play it. I like having an end to my end game. So that I know, okay, I'm gonna need uh, this much time to reach the end. Um, and yeah, something like this. But Last Epoch has one amazing thing uh, that I really like and that's the, the passive trees for active skills. Every active skill having passive trees that allows you to modify it. This is just amazing. This is definitely something part of Exile players really would love. And if you look at the the forum badges and the art style and everything, Last Epoch really is gunning for that uh, that part of Exile player base. It's kind of obviously gunning for part of Exile players to to play their game. And they don't hide it. The developers have said multiple times uh, in the forums that they are fans of Last e of, uh, of Path of Exile. So it makes sense for Last Epoch to, to kind of look like it. Do you have hopes for Path of Exile 2? No, I don't have hopes for Path of Exile 2. I think it's gonna be more of the same. I think it's still gonna have leaks and seasons. I don't like leaks and seasons. I don't like having to start over. I think it's still gonna punish me when I die severely, which I don't like. I don't like losing a lot of uh, time spent leveling up uh, just by dying. I'm gonna probably try it, but I'm not gonna keep playing it. Uh, I'm not a fan of uh, the whole leak season thing. And I'm not saying it's gonna be a bad game. Believe me, it's gonna be a great game and many people will play it. I'm just saying it's not a game for me. It's not uh, a struck game. Man, tell me about it. Uh, I once spent 16 hours a day for three days in a row, starting from level 97, 0%, reaching level 97, 90% and then dying multiple times and then going back to like 10-20%. And that, that way I was stuck at 97 for three days. 16 hours a day, I didn't stream back then, I could just play. I didn't stream, I could play, I had the time. Um, so tell me about it man, tell me about it. It would either be me disconnecting or or it would be the server wagging or it would be make me making a mistake. In any case, uh, there's four different causes of why I would die. Regardless which cause, it's kind of pissing me off when I, when I just can't uh, enjoy a build at its fullest. And I really am all about enjoying builds at its fullest. It, I feel weird when I don't have max level and all the skill points when making builds a and I don't feel like playing meta builds if I don't like them 
In Path of Exile, when I was playing back then, the meta builds were... I don't know, they, they felt boring. If I wanted to go for a boss killer build, it felt like not my kind of build. But in general, um, I don't like the whole playing the browser thing. I don't like uh, my game being uh, uh, on the background and me spending 50-60% uh, of my time on a browser window. Or constantly having to leave my map, go back into my base to give other people items to trade. I don't understand why the game doesn't make a fucking, uh, fucking auction house. Why don't they make a built-in auction house? If they're gonna have free trading, they might as well just make an auction house and get rid of all those websites uh, that people have to visit uh, for trading. Do the websites pay them <laughs> monthly for people not to, for the developers not to make uh, an equivalent of the website? I don't think it has anything to do with Diablo 3. I think they just... Uh, uh, they just know that the players love that whole part of uh, being on different websites to trade. And they probably think it's not worth it uh, developing an auction house system. I mean, Path of Exile already has black market. People are already selling items for real money every season and resources for exalts and uh, whatever other orbs for real money. You're never gonna get rid of that with the current shitty trading that Path of Exile has. Um, you're never gonna get rid of people selling items for money. Another thing that plagued Wilson. People selling trial belts for $300. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Who? And the worst thing is people are actually buying the items. People are actually paying uh, one, two, three, four hundred uh, dollars for a fucking piece of pixels. <laughs> the same was happening to Borderlands 3. When it launched, people were hacking items with... Uh, with tools like cheat engine tables and stuff like that in Borderlands 3 and then selling those items copy pasted and duped uh, on eBay and other websites where you could sell um, Borderlands 3 gear min maxed completely Borderlands gear and people are actually paying for cheated items I really am happy that this game doesn't have such free trading where people can just uh, abuse it and yeah Getting your rent through items or spending your end through items. The, the, sad, the sad story is <laughs> uh, spending your rent on items. <laughs> this would be the sad story if, uh, if people really paid this much for uh, some stupid pixels. If they had exclusive auction house, it would get rid of pay to win third party other than people selling accounts. People could still sell accounts, people could still sell uh, farming runs, boosting runs. And they can still kind of uh, do some way of uh, managing the auction house and um, manipulating the auction house in such a way that people could um, could still trade items through it. But yeah, they can. But yeah, they can. Uh <laughs> they can try to get rid of it. They still won't be able to completely get rid of um, the black market. Even in Diablo 3 you can sell items. Even in Diablo 3 you can say, okay, you're gonna stay in my team, I'm gonna boost you with gear, and you can pay me. I can just farm items and when something nice drops you can take it. Stay with the same class as me. That's something that they can do. And even if Torchlight 3 decides to add that type of trading, Diablo 3 style trading, people would still be able to sell their services of farming items for others while standing in a team so they can trade them back. But then um, it's not guaranteed that they're gonna get a good drop uh, throughout that farming session, so... <laughs> it's not gonna be as uh, as lucrative as just selling the items directly and most people probably won't even bother. But believe me, people would find a way to profit from pixels and from from the greed of, uh, of lazy bastards who, who have deep pockets. You're always gonna have those uh, lazy mofos who who would rather pay for pixels instead of uh, farm them. I like trading gear, I like uh, giving my friends gear and I like saving gear to give to my friends in games. 
but there's always going to be people who would abuse those systems and just uh, twist them, twist them in and use them in, in a way they're not uh, meant to be used. So yeah, there's that. Come on. And that's why I admire when games have SSF leaks. The SSF leak in Path of Exile gets rid of all that whole trading shit. All that trading ordeal. But it still doesn't sort all the, di all the terrible RNG when it comes to crafting. Crafting in Path of Exile... Yeah, I've made myself a meta OP weapon twice I don't want to ever do it again <laughs> I've made myself OP six linked uh, um, uh, what was it infuser or whatever um, that that garb that sadistic garb the unique sadistic garb uh, impulsor impulsor there we go impulsor I've made myself six uh, six linked uh, impulsor uh, once <laughs> I want to have to do it again <laughs> Thankfully with Path of Exile 2 they're getting ring rid of all that uh, six linking and all of that stuff. I like Grim Down though. In Grim Down you can still trade stuff with others. You can still trade stuff with others. In Grim Down the good thing is you have uh, tools like for single player and stuff. You, you have Grim Stash. It's kind of boring when you use Grim Stash but if someone wants to experiment they can at least use Grim Stash. Experiment on their own, test certain things, uh, see if a build works or not. But I'd much rather farm it, test it myself, instead of using tools like Grim Stash. If I use Grim Stash, I get bored of the game. If I open up Grim Stash to give myself some gear, it's no different than cheating. It's fun if you just want to test something, just to test if something works or not, and then start farming for it once you've confirmed it works. But yeah, I mean, isn't the whole point of those games to, to be farming for wood? I mean, it's wooter games, after all. Grim Down uh, is a client site. So you can use cheat engine to get stuff as well, yeah. And that, that's what... Uh, you don't need cheat engine when you've got Grim Stash. Grim Stash basically allows you to give yourself every single item that exists with every single affix, suffix and whatever. But you don't have to play this way, I mean, it's optional. <laughs> it's not like uh, people are getting forced. I mean, if you play with friends that you trust, that you know are not gonna cheat, um, then you can still have fun in Grim Down. Exactly, most people play games to compete. I'm not sure what happened to the to the younger generations of gamers. My generation and the younger ones. So people in their 30s, 20s and uh, teenage years, they're becoming more and more and more competitive. They're, uh, they're, I don't know what's twisting people to be this competitive. Why do people care about their ego so much, about EP in size? Why do you care whether you're stronger than another person or not? Why do you care whether you're clearing a dungeon 20 seconds faster than someone or not? Or 2 minutes faster than someone or not? I really don't care. If someone's doing something better, well, fine, fine. Let him do better the stuff. As long as I'm doing the stuff and completing it and I'm getting my wood in the end, I actually am fine with that. But everyone wants to compete. Everyone wants to be better than the other people. I understand that whole thing. When I was a teenager, I also loved playing Counter-Strike and tournaments in Counter-Strike uh, in my city. There were some local tournaments in net cafes. And I loved that. I loved being at the top of leaderboards with knife kills in, um, uh, of the month uh, in Counter-Strike back then when I was young. Uh, but now I just really don't feel the appeal of being at the top of a leaderboard where I'm not getting real rewards from it. If you can cheat yourself to the gear, the time spent and rewarded doesn't feel real. Well, yeah, but again, 
playing Grim Dawn is like a choice. Uh, you, you don't have to play it with, uh, with cheats and stuff. You can play it legitly. My brother, for example, plays Grim Dawn on mods. And he's happy. He's playing mods that allow him to progress a little bit faster. And uh, he plays mods that allow him to farm uh, items that you exchange for gear. So you're not farming gear, you're farming some sort of tokens, currency, and then you exchange that currency for items. And he's playing uh, a mod that has all sorts of masteries. It has the Titan Quest, the Grim Down, the Diablo 2, the Diablo 3. It has all sorts of different masteries in the mod. I don't know the name of the mod my brother plays, but uh, he plays it every now and then in Grim Down and he's telling me some stuff about it. And that's good. I really like games where I farm tokens and then I exchange those tokens for the legendary item I want. Instead of uh, having RNG show me the middle finger and stick it up my bum because uh, I'm not getting the right um, work to get the right item. I mean, I could spend 1000 hours and still not get that one item I want in Torchlight 3 right now. But in a system where I can just get tokens and then exchange those tokens for the right items for my build. It, it's perfect, it's perfect. This is all I want in an ARPG. All I want is a system like that. I would be happy to get items as well, but I would also be happy to be able to just turn those items into that currency and then exchange that currency for other items. This is also a nice system. I mean, people just don't like those systems. People are hardcore. People love, uh, love uh, things being a little bit more difficult than I do. And again, if someone makes the game I want, believe me, 90% of the player base of ARPGs won't even touch it. But the other 10% who are casuals like me, they would love it. They would love it um, and play the hell out of it. It's obvious that people love stuff like that because uh, people wouldn't be making mods like that one. There was this one a game uh, some time ago I played uh, uh, Titan Buster or something like that. I keep forgetting uh, what the name was because they changed the name. They changed the name once and rebranded the game. But it had that one system where you can do dungeons and then eventually exchange tokens for gear. Random gear but still, still gear. And the old coffin spirit, I totally agree about this. Some people need to need a game win to make themselves feel better. Sometimes I get the urge to do PvP, but um, not even not even for the sake of winning, just for the sake of competing with others. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit of PvP um, every few weeks or every couple of months um, is good for me. But when I want PvP, I go for games like Paladins where everyone has like an equal start at the start of the match and yeah I, I like that type of uh, playstyle but it's all about teamwork so in Paladins if you're doing random randoms and if your team doesn't play the way you want see for example let's say you play aggressively and then you get four teammates that are super care bears and just don't want to be aggressive and well you either have to adapt to their playstyle and hope it works or, or you have to just give up and uh, make sure this game ends quicker or try and make your team to be a little bit more aggressive and flank and think and so on sometimes like in shooter games it's all about compatibility in team shooters if you're not compatible and for example even in fucking BR games if you play in duos for example, one person is a care bear, the other one is rushing and pushing and being aggressive. It's not gonna work as uh, the aggressive person would uh, end up uh, not getting supported by the care bear who is somewhere in a corner camping. <laughs> it's just, you, you gotta be compatible with, with your teammates in any type of uh, competitive game and communicate with them.
But yeah, hopefully, hopefully Torchlight uh, 3 doesn't rush uh, the launch and make sure that everything is fixed uh, and um, tuned, fine-tuned and balanced uh, properly before the game launches and then we're gonna have a good time. see what's here haven't noticed before now uh, but bosses uh, can't be swallowed anymore after update oh yeah they don't seem to be able to be swallowed but uniques can be swallowed uniques can be swallowed Lantern is definitely still worth it. I mean, if they remove the uniques uh, from being able to swallow them, um, yeah, I would definitely stop using Lantern um, for farming if if they make it uniques to not be swallowable. But I can definitely swallow this one. And by the way, uh, Old Coffin, what were you uh, referring to by saying uh, uh, pay to win MMORPG? This game was not meant to be pay to win MMORPG. This game was meant to be a semi MMORPG like Marvel Heroes. In fact, some of the people who worked on Marvel Heroes were working here. Uh, it was meant to be a game like Diablo 4. Basically, what, what is making Diablo 4 unique in its multiplayer was actually already as an idea and implemented in Torchlight 3 uh, when it was Frontiers. So, basically you had open zones. You had those zones were open. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zones. 6 in which you can just explore and see other people. For example, if I'm playing from Europe and there's 10-20 uh, more people from Europe and we have similar ping to the server and we all go into Gobdunk, it's probably gonna be all of us into Lake Gobdunk. And the monsters used to respawn and you could just kill monsters, uh, they would respawn and stuff and there could be other people around you and you could buff each other with the um, adventurer's buff without even being in a team and help each other that way. Um, but they are, their idea for cash shop was storage space, character slots. Uh, they didn't intend to make pay, pay to win. They never uh, claimed to, to want to have pay to win in the game. But I think they realized if they go for a cash shop microtransaction payment model and if they go for, for that frontiers model. Because with the frontiers is you had separate levels for each act. So act 1 had two, uh, 50 levels. Act 2 had 50 levels and the, the total of those was 100. So at level 100 uh, you would have like 100 skill points uh, and the maximum level of skills was level 12. So each skill went to level 12. Um, but yeah, once you get level 50 in the first act and level 50 in the second act, it meant that your level 100 which is the max and you had that uh, 100 skill points. It wasn't a bad system, but then there would have been a constant power creep with the new acts giving you new levels. So there was the question, what happens now after they add Act 3? Would they increase the levels of the max? Would they decrease the maximum level for each act? And they just decided to separate act and levels and to be separate. To Instead of have frontiers, to have Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 and the levels to not... Uh, be dependent on this, which is the best thing they could have done to get rid of the um, vertical progression and just just get standard horizontal progression. Vertical progression works for end game stuff, for post story. Vertical progression works very well for post story. And they could have taken the frontier system and adapted it as an end game uh, as an end game uh, activity. Imagine you having for each act a frontier that has its own levels 
where you can grind some items that are specific and can only be used in that frontier. Um, that that are separate from your gear, like a second uh, inventory. It could be even cosmetics, it could even be just cosmetics. Uh, but something where you can grind certain things uh, and then you can grind some levels and just uh, be pushing the frontier. Imagine the frontier being something like a battleground. Battleground uh, where anyone can go and uh, fight for fight for the frontier, defend that frontier from some invasions uh, and something like that. Similar to, for example, what was that game? Uh, Inquisitor Martyr. Inquisitor Martyr has a very interesting system where once players reach a certain threshold, they reach a certain achievement for the whole server after killing a bunch of uh, enemies from that frontier. So they could have made some sort of an endgame system that is called Frontiers and has separate levels after level 60, something like that maybe could still work. Is Martyr any good? Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask about Inquisitor Martyr. I'm the, the most disappointed person from this title. In my opinion, Inquisitor Martyr is the worst uh, ARPG I've played ever. I hate the combat. Even after they fix the combat multiple times, I still think it feels terrible, especially melee combat. Um, I don't like the level layouts, I don't like the voiceovers, I don't like the the enemies, I don't like the sounds, I don't like the itemization system, the skill system, um, I don't like how people could be level 9 and at top of the leaderboard because they used cheats and uh, there used to be no anti-cheat system where people could freely use trainers and stuff like that. Maybe no longer, uh, maybe maybe new core uh, turn it around. But yeah, uh, I just gave up long ago on that game. I kept returning when they, when they upgraded. But the worst thing about Inquisitor Martyr is the mages. The mages had something like an anomaly or whatever. So if you're casting spells too much, you make an anomaly or whatever, a, a portal, and through this portal some enemies would come and they can just easily kill you and it was weird for only the mage to have such a mechanic such a shit um, mechanic uh, that that makes me just not have fun playing that class I don't know they fucked up my favorite class the mages I normally play mages in games as my first playthroughs and if a game fucks up my favorite archetype of classes uh, this badly as Inquisitor Martyr, I, I, I just, I kept returning hoping that it would be better and it never became better. But there's some of my Struck Club viewers, uh, some of the, the people in my chat have told me that they love it. So again, I'm the wrong person to ask about this game. I guess I'm too negatively biased towards uh, Inquisitor Martyr. And and do you know why I I'm I'm that negative because I love sci-fi, and I love isometric sci-fi ARPGs. But we we don't have many. We only have Skill Squad and Inquisitor Martyr. And Skill Squad is dead until 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 it gets some serious up updates and uh, brings a ton of more players. Skill Squad will be dead. And Inquisitor Martyr is the only the only sci-fi ARPG wooter that we can get right now. Unless there's others I don't know of. Other than Q Squad and Inquisitor Martyr. And it's also in the Warhammer 40k universe, which is such a nice universe. Uh, but I don't know, they they have such uninspired uh, stuff in the game. I played it with my real life buddies, I pre-ordered it uh, uh, before launch and it's been disappointment after disappointment with uh, Inquisitor Martyr. But again, I'm telling you the things I like in games uh, are things others don't. Uh, I'm probably in a very small minority of people who are super casual and the things that uh, I like in the games are much different than what others do. So I'm the, I'm the wrong person to ask if a game is worth it or not because uh, most of the games that are worth it for me are not worth it for others and vice versa. <laughs> I just have a particular taste in, in end game systems and mechanics. 
and itemization and skill systems and so on. I love a lot of freedom and I love a lot of uh, ability to respect and um, and I don't like grinding. I don't like spending uh, um, a month or two months just to finish a fucking build. I don't like having to grind hundreds of hours just to get one item. If I wanted this I could go play any MMO. I could go play uh, even World of Warcraft which is probably my, my most detested MMO ever. Because World of Warcraft uh, fucked up the whole MMO market. Because people started imitating World of Warcraft, trying to emulate its uh, success. And there were so many Asian MMOs trying to copy WoW. And in the end, uh, people just wanted more of the same, and the MMO market just stopped making uh, stopped making good things. Hopefully, Ashes of Creation turns it around. Ashes of Creation just parted ways with my.com so my.com is no longer uh, related to ashes of creation which is which is a bonus it is such a good thing it is such a good thing if you're waiting for an mmo keep a ten keep your eyes on ashes of creation wait until it launches uh, give it another few weeks to see people's reactions um, and to see some footage and uh, gameplay and end game and if, it, if you think uh, you like what you see, maybe Ashes of Creation would be the game for you. I it's promising to be a game similar to Lineage 2. This big one, big open world, big open world where you travel from one end to the other without loading screens and you can just gank people and do some, some PvP around uh, hotspots where bosses farm, uh, bosses spawn and things like that. The most important and hardest part uh, for Ashes of Creation probably would be the netcode. Because Unreal Engine doesn't seem to be optimized for MMOs. And they're using Unreal Engine 4. Which is probably the worst choice of engine uh, for a MMO. But it's such a good choice of engine for a third person RPG. Because it just looks uh, so nice. So, so crisp. So hopefully they just managed to tackle the hard part of the Unreal Engine with Ashes of Creation, which would be the multiplayer part, the massive part, the M, uh, the first M in MMO. If they sort out the first M, the rest, um, the rest is just a matter of good uh, balancing and bug fixing and stuff, and no pay to win. If you give people a good game like Lineage 2, but uh, modernized and uh, kind of up to date with the latest trends, I think many would play it. Many, many are looking for that type of PvP. Right now probably Black Desert Online is the closest you have to the Lineage 2 experience. And those people who love competing, who, who live to PvP, would really love Ashes of Creation. Plus PK mechanics and all of that. I just hope it doesn't end up becoming uh, yet another black desert where people have this uh, farming etiquette where it's acceptable for someone to come and PK you and take your farming spot. But when you return to your farming spot and try to take it over, um, people call you <laughs> Karma Bomber. Because, <laughs> I mean, if you're prepared to PK someone, you better be pk to take the Karma. Uh, involved with uh, defending this spot from its original inhabitant. If that, that's one of the things I can't uh, understand why people in Black Desert are so dense and expect you to not retaliate after taking your spot. You refuse to duel someone, so someone tries to duel me. I refuse to accept the duel because I just want to farm on that spot. I've been here before them. If they want to take my spot, PK me. And then the person PKs me and I return and then he would immediately call karma bombing because because uh, uh, I don't know why I mean I I'm trying to defend my fucking spot I'm not uh, intentionally uh, feeding kills I'm actually trying to kill him <laughs> and I've done it uh, a couple of times actually <laughs> but yeah I mean people in black desert have the most some of the people in black desert not all some have the most uh, dense way of thinking I don't want this happening um, to Ashes of Creation. 
Is it gonna have the same type of uh, open world PvP farming? And uh, old coffin, some messages I'm missing. I normally read messages in between maps or in between fights. I'm gonna read some messages right now. Um, let me check. Uh, but yeah, Q squat. Q squat is a. I I don't know if you know it, but Q squat is a Italian uh, Itali a game made by a small Italian studio. And it's ARPG with uh, sci-fi elements. Uh, early access on Steam. It's very dead right now. And yeah, my most hated MMO is World of Warcraft. Uh, I don't know why. I've tested it when it came out. And I've tested it later on private servers and stuff. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe I, I never had the money to, to be able to spend 15 or 10 or 20 dollars. Whatever it was the cost a month. Maybe I just never could afford it and I never got into it other than testing some private servers. But yeah, for me, uh, back in the day when I was a teenager, I definitely couldn't afford a monthly subscription for a fucking game. Um, but World of Warcraft just made others try to emulate it and to copy it. And it just resulted in in lack of, uh, lack of creativity and people just trying to copy paste World of Warcraft. And trying to do what World of Warcraft did because, well, it worked um, for them. Why, why wouldn't it work for us? Which is such a wrong way of thinking. Because <laughs> success is different for every for every title, for every game out there. Uh, as for Lineage Eternal, I I don't know what that was. Was that the the new one? Oh yeah, that was the new one. That was the 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 Korean one, uh, this one, which never got to exist. It was gonna be the Jabu Tree uh, of uh, Lineage. Actually, did they n rename it to TL? Project TL. Oh yeah. Uh, they renamed it to Project TL. Let me quickly look, look at that. Project TL. Uh, I'm gonna look it up. Uh, I'm gonna share my browser with you folks. Let's look up uh, Project TL together. I opened this one, but uh, I'm wondering if it's gonna be... Let me quickly increase the volume, open volume mixer. Playing in picture? What the fuck? I don't want picture in picture. So this is Project TL. So this is gonna be the, the Lineage Eternal. The Diablo of Lineage. Actually, you can't see it uh, in the full screen, right? Let's, let's have it like this. And I think you can see it like this, can you? No, you can't see it. Okay, my bad. I'm gonna remove the picture in picture and restart it. It's gonna be small. Sorry if it's small on the screen. If I bring a full screen, you don't see it because the way I've cropped my browser window. It looks nice and it's Unreal Engine as well. So just like Ashes of Creation, it's using the same Unreal Engine 4. Close beta is apparently coming um, soon in Korea. We'll see how this comes out. I mean, the the, the sad part is uh, when I was a teenager, I loved PvP. Now I hate PvP. Now I want to be PvE Care Bear. When I was a teenager, I, I used to laugh at PvE Care Bears, and I used to you know, say people tell to people, all right. So, um, to my guild members, I used to tell them, come on, stop care bearing, let's go gank some people. You wouldn't hear me saying this anymore. 
you wouldn't hear me saying this anymore because now I just love PvE. I love uh, instances, raids, bosses. Alright, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Honestly, I did not know they renamed it to Project TL from Lineage Eternal. I was wondering what was happening, so Lineage Eternal will be renamed to Project TL. I'm probably gonna be streaming this if it doesn't end up becoming a pay to win fest uh, like Lost Ark. And people would say Lost Ark doesn't have pay to win, it's paid for convenience. I, I say potato potato, um, it's still giving advantage to people, saving time and time is precious, so you shouldn't be able to buy, uh, buy into that. We'll see how this turns out uh, to be. Oh, sieges! Oh, <laughs> there's gonna be sieges! <laughs> Alright, that, that might be fun. That might be fun. She, you're one of many and you're getting wrecked by all sorts of stuff. Damn, this looks fun. This looks fun, doesn't it? Hopefully they don't fuck up the, the, the user interface because uh, most Korean and Chinese uh, MMOs are known to have terrible interfaces full with eye cancer. Hopefully this ends up having simpler uh, interface like maybe Terra. actually enjoyed Terra, didn't have much of a cluster and I could switch things on and off. But yeah, Project TL seems like uh, something interesting, something impressive could uh, could come out of it. Keep in mind this is just some trailers and cinematics so the, the actual gameplay could be much much more different than this. Okay. Now what about here? Oh, he's using footage from the same video, so yeah. Alright, I think that's all the video I can show you. But Ashes of Creation that I was talking about has so much more footage uh, to see. Uh, let's just filter it. Just trying to show you uh, official footage. I don't think I can show you official footage. Well, some other time. Some other time I can probably link some official dev stream footage from two weeks ago from the dev stream when Margaret, Steven and some other people were playing together. Uh, but yeah, look, look dev stream of, for Ashes of Creation. They make one every week, I think, or every month. Um, and one of the latest uh, streams for Ashes of Creation was them showing up uh, a little bit of the, the world, a little bit of the gathering, crafting. Um, actually, not the crafting, just the gathering. Just the gathering and just some of the open world and the devs having fun uh, with GM access and flying around the map. So let me... Let me check if I've missed some messages. I also don't like having 30 skills to press uh, and... Uh, I started playing Lineage 2 when when the... When the final... The, the sixth Chronicle. I think I started playing around Chronicle 6. Uh, I think Chronicle 6 was right before Kamael. So when I started playing Lineage 2 it was before Kamael. Final Fantasy Realm Reborn, I might try it. The warrior in the trailer had a shield and a great sword. Dark Souls style. <laughs> yeah, definitely like that. 
Do you prefer pay to win or monthly sub? I prefer buy to play. <laughs> I don't like monthly sub. I don't like uh, I don't like having to um, to pay monthly. I like buy to play with expansions. Buy the game, then eventually buy the expansion. Guild Wars 2 kind of had this, but it also had the market with the pay to win stuff. Even though it wasn't uh, that much win, it was still win. And it was still overpowered. Buy to play never works with those games, yeah. Monthly subscription now, now that I'm actually earning money and I'm not a teenager. Um, I think uh, subscription would be fine. But I would rather have a cosmetic shop. No, no pay to win. No stats. No stats at all. Just cosmetic stuff. Just cosmetic in-game purchases for people who want skins. Skins for their helmet, skins for their legs, skins for their boots, skins for their pets, skins for everything. Skins for their mounts, things like that. I don't care if people have shiny, shiny horses. Look at my horse. Fuck that, I don't care about uh, anyone's horse. <laughs> so I'm, f I'm happy with games who have that type of, um, that type of uh, subscription system. Uh, instead of subscribing every and paying every month, instead of pay to win, to just have cosmetics. It never works for those games, because there's never enough people who just want to buy cosmetics. But it could work. It could work in a game with buy to play and expansions. Let's say every six months you have to get an expansion that doesn't make the old content useless and the old items and the old builds useless, just gives you new items without power creep. So let's say a person who owns expansion number one is not stronger than a person who doesn't own it. But it just has slightly different playstyle as a result from the new items and maybe new classes and skills and things like that. Uh, if if developers can can nail this balance, this uh, balance of adding new stuff that doesn't become stronger stronger than the old stuff, uh, I think games can be very successful. That will bloat the content with useless content that it happened. Well, think of it that way. In in Lineage 2, you had uh, in Lineage 2 you had. Uh, Chronicles and then after that was uh, Camel and then Gar Garcia and whatever else came and that was still content it was content it was new new zones I'm not talking of uh, of bloated content that no one plays I'm talking about the content that just gives you access to certain things Path of Exile is the worst example because uh, there are so many useless old items that the new items became the power creep um, and out of 950 uh, unique items, people probably use 2-300 and the others um, are not used in meta builds. I don't, I don't like things like that happening, uh, bloating the game with items no one uses. I think there needs to be a balance. When you add new content, you have to make sure the new content is not better than the old. The new items, the new classes, the new skills, the new heroes are not better, just different. Just different looking and providing a different playstyle, yet equally balanced. But yeah, uh, old coffin spirit, uh, nice for you to, to chat about things like that. I often rant about certain things when it comes to MMOs uh, and the old days and um, itemizations and stuff. But um, nice chatting with you, uh, it was, uh, was a pleasure uh, talking about stuff. Uh, thank you for the conversation as well, indeed. <laughs> Definitely fun. There's ways though, there's ways to add content in games uh, without uh, needing pay to win or, uh, or a subscription. There's ways of doing expansions right and wrong. If you do expansions like Guild Wars 2, 
where you buy the expansion and then you get the previous parts of the game. You always have to buy the latest expansion. In a way it works, but in a way it doesn't. Because with Guild Wars 2 you want every expansion to get the best out of it. You can't just play the base game uh, right now. And right now if I go in Guild Wars 2 with just owning the base game and not the expansions, I don't think I'm going to have the same experience. I don't think I'm going to get all the best items and things probably. Do I like Elder Scrolls Online? I never got to max level. I, I, I ended up getting one or two levels before maximum before I quit. I actually had a subscription ongoing uh, which I forgot to remove uh, until until uh, a few months after I quit. <laughs> or maybe two months after I quit uh, Elder Scrolls. But yeah, uh, Elder Scrolls seems like a copy-pasted Guild Wars 2 to me. They copy-pasted World v. World, they copy-pasted in a way structured uh, PvP. Um, many things in Elder Scrolls seem like uh, Guild Wars 2 clone in a way. But I did like it, I really liked it. I really liked it. Uh, I loved the PvP uh, before max level. That early PvP bracket, I enjoyed every now and then while leveling up my hero to get that um, that PvP going. But I know, in the end, uh, I ended up quitting it uh, before I even moved on to the stuff. I thought I'm gonna have to grind a lot to get equally geared to compete with others. Um, and I didn't even want to compete, I just wanted to do instances. I was looking for something to do PvE and dungeons. At the time when I was testing uh, Elder Scrolls Online, I was just looking for a game to, to kill stuff and wood stuff. So probably MMO wasn't the, be and the best choice, uh, a PvP MMO. I liked Elder Scrolls Morrowind. I enjoyed playing Morrowind uh, back in the day. I think uh, the first PC we got uh, at for my brother's 18th birthday, I think uh, he got a PC uh, and uh, then with the video card I think they gave him Morrowind. The Elder Scrolls Morrowind, uh, legit copy. Uh, and I loved playing that a lot from the Elder Scrolls series. I never got into Oblivion uh, and Skyrim, I don't know why. Um, they just seemed different to me than the old games. But yeah, Diablo 4 would be fun, probably. I'm not gonna set my hopes up, because uh, Blizzard Activision. But I also have... Um, I also have a little bit of hope in the in the person that was in charge of the Witcher or one of the people in charge of the Witcher who is now in charge of Diablo 4 unless they changed him but I think it's still the same person uh, it was a Polish name I, I don't remember the name it was a Polish developer someone that used to work in CD Projekt Red uh, no, not Red uh, Red <laughs> CD Projekt Red <laughs> not sure why I say, said Red <laughs> But that would have been a nice uh, name, uh, nice typo uh, of the mouth. But if if uh, Activision is pushing um, a developer's or a producer or director's uh, hand into making something they don't want, uh, it it won't have good results. If if they gave him creative freedom. If they gave the Diablo 4 team creative freedom without pushing them into making um, uh, monetization systems and stuff like that that people don't want and tying them into the gameplay, um, then probably Diablo 4 might end up being nice. For now everything I've seen about Diablo 4 has been um, something I like. I like uh, the simplified system. I like the skill system, uh, I like the itemization system. I like what I'm hearing about them making ancient drops be something you can only wear in one, one per hero. So you only have one ancient to equip, you can't equip more than one. If, if that's still in the plans for Diablo 4, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, 
we can wait and see. We've got what another year before uh, before it launches. It's probably launching by the end of next year. Most likely we're gonna get some demo uh, in June on the 21st uh, anniversary of Diablo. So most likely around June we're gonna get something. Oh shit, this is the broken map. Fuck. Fuck, I forgot this is the broken map. Uh, without a boss. Alright, so let's remember not to do uh, the level 20 something unique map. Uh, I'm expecting uh, Diablo 3 to have open beta that you can buy access uh, within a year and I'm expecting it uh, June 2022 to launch. So I'm expecting June 2022 launch and maybe uh, some proper announcement in June 2021 and probably a playable alpha or beta that you can buy access. Uh, just uh, just like the um, word, uh, what's the name? Uh, Warcraft 3 Remastered. Just like the Warcraft 3 Reforged or whatever the name was. Uh, I'm expecting for them to pull off something like this where people can probably buy into the beta. But alright, see ya, see ya, old coffin spirit. Uh, thanks again for stopping by and for the follow. Really appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the Struck Club. <laughs> Unforged, yeah. <laughs> Unforged. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, if they want to keep that June date uh, for anniversaries, for announcements, most likely next year in June we're gonna get some announcement, maybe a playable demo at some sort of a convention and whatever. Uh, playable demo that's more than just uh, one single quest story and uh, and that's it and a dungeon, something more. Um, and probably 2022 around the summer maybe Diablo 4 could be ready. But I think they're they're closer to launch than that. They're closer to launch than we think. Because I think there's a lot of people working on it uh, um, intensely. So maybe Diablo 4 is closer than we think. And maybe in a year's time it could be probably in a nice better state that people can just start uh, buying access into. And helping uh, bug fix, uh, bug test. I'm at 52 contract levels. Should I push it to, to 60, 70? Let's try 75 contract levels before I collect. So let's remember not to go the level 20 map. There was like a level 20 or so map. With the automatons and uniques. Was it here? Automatons, uniques, electric map uh, is the one we don't want to do. Looking for a unique, come on. So was it this one? I think it was this one I was doing and I think it was the broken one, right? Let me quickly check if there was another one that's broken. Ah, it was this one. It was this one that was broken with the nether well. So at 15 or 14, we can do this one without it being broken. Hopefully, I mean, I can't know if it's broken until I enter. But I knew for the other one because I did it two times and it ended up being a broken map. I'm gonna quickly look up the name of this Diablo 4 developer. So it's apparently creative director and uh, top writer from Cyberpunk 2077. 
Um, just a moment. Sebastian Stepien, who was also one of the creative directors on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Um, so Sebastian Stepien. Uh, this is the name. So those of you who are interested, this is uh, the name. Uh, this is the person who who has been drafted from CD Projekt uh, Red to work uh, for Blizzard on Diablo 4. So there's one thing to know. This is the person uh, behind uh, writing some nice stories, quests and stuff like that. So in the Witcher series I was uh, amazed by how fun and uh, interesting the quests were. Although they were drawing from a book. So definitely a bonus there when you have a uh, source, source material to draw inspiration from. Uh, but uh, they definitely handled the Witcher series amazingly well and if this person is writing uh, and in charge of the creative stuff uh, in Diablo 4 I'm hoping it would uh, end up being super nice and uh, epic story to go through because when I was young uh, and when I was a teenager and before that playing Diablo 1 and 2 and the story there was nice I mean right now I, <laughs> I've already <laughs> played it so much so it's not gonna surprise me but with Diablo 4 moving into hell uh, into not hell but uh, uh, what was the name um, what was the name of this uh, this uh, monster the word of monsters uh, ah, fuck it was purgatory purgatory yeah in purgatory uh, whatever it was called um, so yeah, after seeing the different uh, the different quans of Purgatory and all that, fighting all those different quans, it's gonna be interesting to see how how things are in there. Can't wait to see how how things are in the other side of things and how deep um, the story would go with Lilith being the big bet. Lil is definitely a nice uh, idea as a big bet for Diablo 4. And Diablo 4, believe me, bad or not, I will be playing and streaming Diablo 4. Regardless whether it ends up being uh, bad or not, I will be playing and streaming it and making content for it. <laughs> Because I just, I just want to, I just want to do Diablo 4 stuff so much. Uh, hopefully it doesn't end up being a bad game. Because if it's, if it's a bad game, eventually I'm gonna give up and and stop doing stuff for it. But Diablo 4 is something I just can't miss out on, on Diablo 4. It's, uh, it's the, probably one of the most weighted games for my channel. Definitely waiting Diablo 4 more than Path of Exile 2. Grim Dawn 2 is something I'm looking forward to whenever they think it's time for a um, new, completely new engine, completely new game of Grim Dawn. This is probably the one I would be the most excited about. Even more excited than Diablo 4 probably. Because uh, great entertainment. They've, they've just been delivering and delivering good stuff with Grim Dawn for so long. I just think it's probably already time to, to start making a new game with completely different mechanics and stuff. Still similar, but completely new engine. Even though they updated the old Grimdown engine, it's still it's still Grimdown. It's still you, you can still say and tell it's the same game. It still has the same mechanics and stuff. Still has that Titan Quest feeling. <laughs> oh, please don't tell me this map can be completed. Please tell me there's enough automatons. We need 25. Okay, there's enough. There's enough. Come on, three automatons. We just need three. There we go, those three. Uh, 
Whoa, has Grim Down 2 even been hinted at? I don't think it's been hinted at. I, I don't think Grim Down 2 has been hinted at, uh, but it's coming eventually. I mean, it probably would be 2, 3, 4, 5 years from now. I'm sure that uh, it's probably the right time to start working on Grim Down 2. Maybe hi hire some more people um, and work on Grim Down 1. But in the meantime, start working on Grim Down 2. The hardest part is making uh, your own engine, I guess. If you want to make your own engine and not use another one. But they could just as easily use uh, the Unreal Engine, um, hopefully not Unity. Or another, there, there's probably other engines than Unity and Unreal that can be used to make a nice uh, ARPG out there. This game is using Unreal and they definitely said that they had problems uh, throughout the development in one of the dev streams. Um, the dev stream before launch, uh, not before launch but before early access. Between the close of uh, close beta and the start of early access there was uh, that one reminiscing stream where the developers uh, shared some experiences with bugs and stuff that uh, resulted um, from them using the Unreal Engine and stuff like that and how badly optimized the Unreal Engine is for titles like this one for anything that's not a shooter <laughs> uh, but yeah we'll see I mean I think someone out there can make an amazing KRPG. But I think Grim Down 2 would be my most anticipated title whenever it comes out, whenever it gets announced. As soon as I know it's coming, I'm gonna start anticipating. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's see. Probably gotta get rid of those. Let's do a few more maps and then collect items. Nyx wife bound on Netherwell map. We could do this, we could do this. But yeah, Klaus, uh, I don't think there has been a Grim Down 2 announcement. Let me look it up. Grim Down 2. Uh, yeah, the 1st of May. Crate Entertainment talks about Grim Down 2 plans. Uh, just a moment, I'm gonna show my browser. Shit, this stupid uh, cookie saving doesn't wanna save my cookie settings. Okay, I'm gonna look up a different website. Uh, Grim down to plans. Because uh, this website was terrible. Alright, there we go. Sharing now. From the official crate. Crate Entertainment talks about Grim Down 2 plans. Oh, it's from the same website. Shit. We already know uh, that isn't happening. Paul Barn. Uh, and this pretty much confirms Grim Down expansions are for sure. I oh, don't know. That's some people trying to. Beyond that, we are uh, talking, taking some time to think about what we want to do with the sequel. So they already are thinking, thinking about what they want to do with the sequel, and that's from May. So from like half a month, uh, half a, half a year ago, almost, a um, few months ago. Uh, Yeah, I'm thinking we can probably get a Grim Down 2 announcement in 1-2 years from now. Maybe in 2022 we can get an announcement. And then in 2023-24 maybe we can see some some playable versions of the game. I mean, 
I'm excited because Grim Dawn really has a lot of uh, a lot of stuff I want to see um, done again in a new game. So yeah, all right, back to the game. Today has been a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, browser game <laughs> day. <laughs> I've been I've been talking a lot about other games, but I love it when when we talk about other games. And yeah, tomorrow I'm hopefully gonna make the build video for this guy. I mean, the game is not giving me the legendary items I want. I really want just two items right now. I want the celestial breastplate, uh, not celestial, cosmic breastplate, and the cosmic. Um, Helmet, that's it. Helmet and chest from that uh, Realm Master set. That's all I want right now. And then I can make the build video tomorrow, and tomorrow I can play Chronicon, uh, Chronicon with uh, with anyone who won't be who who will be interested in teaming up in doing some co-op on my first playthrough. Or I could just solo. As a first playthrough, it won't be bad to just do it at my own pace. But yeah, Chronicon is uh, on the menu tomorrow for the stream. But the build is coming before the stream during the day or evening. It depends how long it takes me to make the build, I guess. I really wish this build... Um, it's not even... I'm not even playing the final build. I was kind of disappointed to find out that 60% is the cap for attack speed. So Conjure Electrode is going away for sure. Oh shit, did I just get one shot? I just got one shot. Alright, let's go collect some wood. Uh, I'm kind of uh, getting tired of doing this grinding. Hopefully I get the items I want. But yeah, kind of disappointing. I really wanted uh, to stack a ton of attack speed. And if I can't stack this 50% attack speed with this 25% attack speed and get all of it and I only cap at 60%, I mean right now I'm almost capped. My attack speed is 56% because I've got attack speed here and I've got attack speed here. So I don't even need those other skills for another 4%. I can just use this item, a Frenzy's Blade, which I was experimenting with earlier. And this gets me to 50% attack speed by itself. So Frenzy's Blade and another 10% already hits you the cap. So Frenzy's Blade, actually I don't need it with my current gear. Let me quickly put the, the correct item here. So attack speed, basic attack stuff really needs uh, some loving. I think they should remove that 60% cap and uh, approach um, approach attack speed differently for each weapon. Each weapon needs to be revisited. Because right now the attack speed uh, and uh, damage of every every weapon seems so badly balanced. I mean, staffs are overpowered. Staffs make no sense to be this overpowered as a basic attack weapon. Uh, Two-handed. I mean, staffs attack as, qu as quickly as a sword. They hit multiple enemies just like a sword and they're two-handed. So, kind of weird. Should I start rolling for the, the helmet? Maybe get one instead of rolling for the chest. You know what, let's do it uh, like this first. Just doing what we were doing earlier. Just who I wanted to see. All right, like this. You come back. Um. All right, five more. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, wait. When did I have this many open swords? One, two. If you have money, I got gear. No, no, no. Wait. Flying pigs evade. Never mind. So, poison, nice, with the socket. No! <laughs> Can't wait to see what the legendaries will be. more left few more uh, bundles to collect this was the last legendary gear bundle though alright we've got all the legendary gear bundles uh, first comes the blue stuff Today I've I've opened so many gear bundles. So many gear bundles. Just who I wanted to see. Actually, that's not a bad one. That's not a bad two-handed uh, rail hammer. But never mind. Never mind. Might still get it though, just uh, just in case I am doing a flame and train build. I'm probably gonna eventually do a flame and train build once they fix fireball. This fireball right now seems okay. Battery ram third time, snake stick for the sixth time, arc power chest for the second, cosmic pants for the second time, Woodsby shoulders for the second time. Come on, man. It's just giving me the same items over and over and over again. How am I gonna make my builds if the game just doesn't give me the items I want? I, I don't have uh, I don't have a month to grind on a single hero. That's just not the way I play games. I, I don't wanna spend on a single hero on a single build a fucking month grinding for gear. Just so I can get the base items of the build, not min maxed items with the best rows, just uh, just the base items, the the required items. I'm already on what day three, day three I think of this hero, or is it day four? Can't remember when I started, but I guess it's still the third day of me playing this hero. Or maybe it's day four, because I think yesterday was day three. Let me check my stream name for yesterday. Yesterday's stream was... Uh, yeah, I've got uh, part 1, part 2, part 3 and then gearing up. And so 23rd, 23rd, 24th, 24th and 20... 
and I think uh, in the 22nd I started the hero maybe or it could have been 23rd in any case yeah I'm on day 3 I think day 3 for this build so I've spent uh, how many hours on this hero let me check my stream 2 hours 50 minutes, 4 hours 47 minutes, 3 hours 15 minutes, 4 hours 50 minutes and some time playing off stream as well. So 7, uh, 12, 13, 15, 16, around 17, 18 hours already, like 20 hours. So let's, let's sum it up to 20 hours already on this hero. And we're just not getting that stuff. All right, let me let me go back to the game. Just checking some some stuff. So I guess we have to get rid of those that way. Attack speed for basic attacks, no thank you. I've already got enough. It's very disappointing, I mean, it's so disappointing with those nerf drop rates to people like me who, who are all about uh, changing heroes and experimenting with builds. Right now the game is very discouraging. Because it it wants uh, it wants your soul. It wants you to grind your ass off. Not a fan of games who want my soul. Okay, like this. <laughs> Let's see here. Come on, give me that good map mod. Give me that good map mod. Unique Infamous, nice. This is this is the maps we want to be doing. Uh, but yeah, Grim Down Two seems to be confirmed, Klaus. It seems to be confirmed. Because if they're saying, if they're using the word sequel, if they're using the word sequel in in their in their um, text message or whatever it was in their post uh, from May then they're thinking of Grim Down 2 and I would actually rather them make Grim Down 2 because it seemed like an interesting uh, war the war behind Grim Down 2 can be expanded so much uh, with enough creative uh, ideas the world is big, the world is big and vast just on the map we've got in Grim Down 1 I mean, it's a nice world, it's a nice world I, I love how certain things there work When I get uh, a little bit more um, more uh, used to using my website, I could probably start writing about games and stuff um, other than just builds. For now, my, my website is only for builds, but I'm thinking of posting things um, with news and trailers of upcoming games uh, and just making different categories. One category for builds, one category for news and stuff. Because maybe it might be nice, it might be nice to 
to visit the Struck Club <laughs> to find out about uh, what other games uh, I'm interested uh, about and following. I'm not a journalist and I don't have an education in journalism, but uh, who has nowadays from the people who write articles about games? I think the majority of the people don't even have education that write, uh, and you don't even need it, I mean, as long as you can write uh, in English uh, properly, you don't even need uh, official education to write about games, to, to write articles, news articles. Um, so I'm thinking probably to start doing that as well, eventually, um, to just... Uh, sum up all the things I'm excited about uh, in text format, not just video. And probably just embed my video versions of those uh, as well into those articles. Might be nice, might be nice for those who don't want to listen to me talking about games um, and stuff like that in a video to just have a text version the same way I do with guides and builds. What's happening with this map? There aren't that many uniques, are there? I think I need to revisit some of the zones uh, I've uh, cleared, because there might have been missed enemies. Oh, there are. There are, believe me. There's fame. Oh, see, we've missed one here. They're just slow to spawn on this map, I've noticed, so... So we gotta we give them time to spawn. So I've missed this part here. Hi, um, how does the Toto train goes? <laughs> The Toto train <laughs> doesn't go very well because I found out attack speed is capped. Attack speed is capped at uh, 60%, so you can't get more than 60% attack speed. Which uh, means my basic attack build is not gonna be as fun as I imagined. Hopefully it gets buffed. I'm still gonna upload the build and make it. I'm just gonna mention that... Um, I'm expecting uh, changes to attack and attack speed, to basic attacks from Ektra. Hopefully they deliver. Because it's, it's underwhelming. I think attack, basic attack builds should be just as viable as non-basic attack builds in a game. So if someone wants the auto attack experience uh, and to build around it, they should be able to make a viable build. In this game, we have items, you have synergies for basic attacks. But they still feel uh, underwhelming when you compare them to, to skill-based builds, spell-based builds. But again, this is early access, so feedback like that and people like me who test stuff like basic attacks to give the feedback are important. I'm gonna write up some feedback about it uh, after, after a few days, uh, once I figure out uh, some ideas of how it can be improved. But in general, I think basic attacks need to be reworked. Every single one. Every single weapon needs to be revisited and... To see what can be done to make the basic attack combo feel like a real combo. Like you're doing something with each next wing, something uh, new happens. Not just smashing, mashing and stuff like that. Have you heard anything about the patch hotfix? Yes, uh, I've, I've said it yesterday. Uh, there's gonna be a patch next week. This week probably a hotfix. This week probably a hotfix, but early September there's gonna be a patch. Um, that, as I said yesterday, adds 10 more skill points. Um, re revisit some of the difficulty stuff. So they're gonna be reworking some of the difficulty changes. Uh, like, uh, in general, every difficulty probably would be revisited and um, rebalanced, I guess. Uh, more about this in the State of the Game uh, Week 10 post. State of the Game Week 10... I need to make comments for this. 
I've got a limited number of 25 commands, so if I make new commands, I have to delete old ones. But this is state of the game week 10. Uh, the link is coming up in the chat right now. So state of the game week 10 is uh, the latest we've heard from them. And in there, they're talking about future plans. So yeah, this is what I was referring to. This week, at best, we can hope for a small hot fix for certain broken things. I would love for uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow to get some sort of a hot fix. Tu Tuesday, Wednesday seems like a good day for a hot fix uh, to fix certain broken skills and abilities uh, and procs. Something minor that has been tested and confirmed to work. Uh, Maybe fix to this glitch where my train constantly uses the endurance attack without me having the item for it. Because this is making me a little bit uh, more powerful than I need to be. Or than I'm supposed to be. And I feel weird playing this, but I can't just stop using my train card just because it's glitched. It's something uh, major as part of the, the setup I wanted. It's like not using the the 50% whitening damage because it's supposed to be 25. <laughs> I'm gonna use it, but know that my damage will be lower when they rebalance things. And yeah, we talked about a lot of stuff today. It's seven minutes past midnight. So there's gonna be a little bit more playing. Uh, I'm gonna go and respect my build and hopefully don't get my ass kicked too much. Uh, so I'm going for the basic attack setup now. So if you're wondering what um, what my skills would look like after I get rid of chaotic strikes, uh, <laughs> ridiculous would be hurtful. I, I don't think uh, when I'm recording footage for the build video I will do ridiculous. I don't think I would have the damage uh, required to push ridiculous with, uh, with the build once I change my skills. Uh, in the next uh, few minutes. Even if I stack the most basic attack stuff I can get, even even in such a case, it will not be enough. So let's say I get this 30% basic attack damage and let's say I get this 50% basic attack damage. And the worst thing is I'm using a mace. This skill is gonna change in such a way that you don't have to use a mace to get the basic attack damage. Do I want this? Probably not yet. If I get two points removed from here, two points removed from here, and then another two here and here, that's eight points. Eight points, from those eight points, I'm thinking of putting uh, five points here, and then I've got three more points. Three more points to put them here to get me the damage to conductor skills, and that means I can have this level four, level eight, level four, level eight, Level 8, level 4, level 1, which would make um, 4, 8, 4, 8, what's that, uh, 24, that's gonna be 24 conductor, and in the slammer I'm gonna have uh, 13, so th 13 slammer. 13 Slammer, 24 Conductor, 23 Electrode. This is what it's gonna be in the end. And then another 10 points, the other 10 points, the way I would spend the remaining extra 10 points. Most likely, 
I could get that attack speed for train cars and most likely I could get the the crit chance for conductor skills or or I can get um, or I can get this stronger and get this maxed out and if I max this one out or at least get it to tier 2 but if I get to tier 2 might as well get the tier 3 so let's say um, I get 10 more points and then I put 8 points here and then I've got only 2 points left with 2 points I'm not gonna be able to get this for the attack speed we'll see we'll see um, but yeah for now I need doom pipe I really need a doom pipe so I need this item and the cosmic breastplate I need the cosmic helmet and I need a doom pipe that's it those three items that's all I need let's try this build uh, the way it is right now just see how it works maybe try and get another legendary bundle used Uh, I've gotten the holy icon shield. Uh, I've gotten the holy icon shield um, some time ago. I'm not sure if I can find you a screenshot. But let me try and find it. Screenshots, torchlight, three early access. Um, is it here? No, it's not here. Books, maybe it's in books. It's not on books. Character, not on character. Wipe, no, it's not here. Well, fuck it, I can't find it. I can't find where it is, but it's somewhere there. I, I, I've seen it, I've used it. Uh, I had it. Uh, it's probably saved in, in not Torchlight 3 screenshot folder, but in another folder. <laughs> but yeah I've gotten it uh, in the test server mind you I didn't get it in the live server I got it in the test server and I got it in the private test server and basically what it does is it's an alpaca that shoots holy bolt that's what it does alpaca alpaca messengers that keep shooting holy bolt at enemies that's what what it is nothing too special but it's still nice it feels nice when you have some alpacas around you running around uh, using holy bolts the thing here is the question is would the holy boat um, be benefiting from holy boat upgrades the same way uh, using holy boat with arc of light um, uses an upgraded uh, and damage enhanced uh, upgraded damage enhanced um, absorber with the auto cast it doesn't use the upgrades from the tiers but it uses the upgrades from damage from levels um, I've tested that and I've confirmed it uh, when it comes to the Arc of Light. So the question here is with the Alpaca Messenger whether the Holy Boat it shoots will be benefiting from increased levels in Holy Boat and whether it would make more damage if you max out uh, Holy Boat on a mage. The best item I found in Torchlight 3 uh, I don't know. Uh, once, once uh, a long time ago, I had a triple socketed, uh, offhand, uh, legendary focus item. <laughs> a long time ago, long time ago in the alpha, I had a level 50, which was the maximum for a uh, frontier. Level 50 legendary uh, item that looks like oh no, it looked like the arc of light. Uh, it looked like this item. Visually, it looked like. Uh, Just a moment to find it. So it looked like Brilliant Herald. It looked like the Brilliant Herald visually. But it was triple socketed and it was legendary. But back then we didn't have legendary powers. So legendary items were just stronger versions of blue items. That's what they were. They weren't anything special. They didn't have special powers. Only 
three four items had special powers and they were not that special really but yeah uh, back then we had for a while triple socketed legendaries <laughs> it was nice uh, it felt great uh, i miss those times i wish um, i wish they never removed uh, the triple socketing from items But it was so difficult to get uh, maxed out um, item from the sockets. All right, let's do another map and just test this build. But I'm not gonna do Fazir. I'm just gonna do what's my highest damage reduction? Fire. So let's go do a fire map. Oh, and gear work bonus. Basic attack stuff. I'm probably gonna use the the storm blade instead of egg of mayhem. Any any suggestions? Do you want to see me experiment with something? We've got a few more minutes, like 15 more minutes to experiment. Uh, so I'm thinking of using Stormblade here instead of Veg of Mayhem. But um, anything else you want to see, let me know. For example, we can use this, the Fire Starter, but I don't think it's going to work well, especially now that I don't have chaotic strike so this is out of the question frenzy's blade is not needed because i'm almost capped on basic attack so using frenzy's blade for just extra six percent attack speed is useless maestro sword is an underwhelming um, so i guess storm blade and let's see how this works I'm gonna try without the train first. Let's try without the train on ridiculous. It's so bad. It's so bad without the train. It's so bad. Maces. Maces are the worst basic attack weapons ever. Let's remove the train. See, my basic attacks are slower than the train attacks and they're doing three times less damage. 38k. Was that my pet doing 38k or was it me? Yeah. 23k. 46k. That I think 46k was my pet in the 77k. Stalactites is nice. I really love Stalactites and I uh, the Maestro Sword seems uh, bad. The Maestro Sword seems bad. So where is my stalactites stuff to to test it? But yeah, with trains it seems good. Right now I'm testing basic attack stuff. So let's check the stalactites and then again the storm blade. Just checking, 46k crit. 46k crit is not too bad, but with this attack speed it's terrible, honestly. And this is to a swallowed enemy. What about with vulnerability of white? Apply vulnerability, swallow it. 96k. 96k to a swallowed uh, uh, enemy with applied vulnerability. Okay, 96k on ridiculous, mind you. It's not terrible. If only the attack speed was not capped uh, as much. My idea was to be a zealot and to have so much attack speed uh, that I'm proking stuff all the time. And I think if they remove this limit of attack speed capped at 60 and I can get to like 100 or 120, uh, it would work amazingly well. Right now I'm just testing without the train uh, on purpose, um, so don't uh, be wondering why the train is not here. Just trying to test my, my damage numbers. So 
So with the stalactites, it's not so bad with the stalactites, I guess. Let's see with this one. But if you're gonna be doing basic attack stuff, maybe it's better to get that extra um, extra 20% melee damage reduction. So uh, the highest hit I got uh, to an enemy, to an automaton, regular automaton, uh, that was vulnerable, was 96k. Let's use the train now and see how it goes with the train. I'm missing something uh, on my skill bar. What am I missing? I mean, I replaced chaotic strikes with shocking rounds. But maybe... Maybe I could use Lantern Flash so that it dots the enemies and dotting the enemies would uh, would proc stuff, would proc uh, Stormblades. I think Stormblade is uh, probably better. And then the Stalactites. It's only maximum once per second. But it's 200% weapon damage. The Stalactites are good for mobbing. And the Stormblade is good for bossing. Maybe, maybe we can put it that way. So let's see with just the train. What we can get. The train itself could clear stuff. I mean, if I just let the train be uh, clearing stuff, it would be enough. It would be enough for me to just stay back and uh, see the train do the job. And keep in mind, I'm not using uh, Walkerwise Storm right now. On purpose, just to just to gouge the DPS with and without it. The next group of elites, this one, will be with the with the storm. It doesn't come anywhere near the DPS of. Um, it doesn't come anywhere near the DPS of uh, what's its name, chaotic strikes. But I'm, I'm doing hundred thousand damage hits with my basic attacks. That's not bad. That is not bad. It's not meta, but it's uh, it's okay. It's something that uh, can do damage. And that's without the rework of this passive. Without the rework of this passive and without those extra 10 skill points. Uh, who did 200,000? Was that my pet? Or was that my Stormblade uh, proking? I, I saw 200, uh, 200k damage. Was it my train car? It might have been my train car, honestly. But yeah, some of those uh, basic attack legendary affixes shouldn't only work with trains. But that's the Seismic Charger. The Seismic Charger 1.0 was using uh, those items. It was using the gauntlets and boots. So I was, I was using um, Cosmic Gauntlet. And I was using the cosmic boots, which are... Where are they? This one. But this seismic charge is very underwhelming. It says 400 weapon damage. But it really it really was... Uh, it was basically a very s small projectile. It was... J look at that rail. Roughly as wide as a rail. Not the whole train railing, railing but just as the single rail. So roughly this wide. Definitely smaller than this, but around the size of this. It's just one wave straight forward. So spike drive, but just a single projectile of spike drive. And just a small projectile of spike drive, not the upgraded one. Because you know spike drive has different projectiles. So if you upgrade it 
to fire a large miss uh, to fire a large missile straight ahead for double skills current weapon damage. This projectile is a little bit wider and bigger, but um, but the boots uh, only do a regular wave, so they they don't do even the upgraded one. I think those boots need to change to maybe do less damage, but fire multiple projectiles. Or to do the same damage, but have a wider projectile that can hit more than just uh, what's right in front of you. Because they seem underwhelming. I mean, I've tested them, believe me, I have tested them. And now I don't feel the need to get the duration of this one as well. Because attack speed, uh, I don't even need that attack speed anymore. As much as I did before. This one won't be a bad one as well. Mm, instead of this maybe. But okay, let's see. Oh, I, I promised uh, Seismic Charger 2.0 and uh, this is it. This is as close as I can get to the first Seismic Charger with the current skill points and with my current items uh, without finding the... The co I've got the Cosmic Gauntlets, by the way. But I'm using those three skittering pieces for now. I mean, I no longer need those gauntlets. But the extra duration for this is not bad. But let's see, if I change this, I'm losing 5.6 block chance. And that means I no longer need to be using the Plague Helmet. Uh, but the problem is I don't have anything better. I don't have anything better as a helmet. This one with fire defense uh, doesn't have the crit chance. So right now probably it's better to use those gloves instead of uh, instead of the other ones. And they do give me basic attack uh, attack speed. But if I need basic attack attack speed, I can just get um, what's its name the. Um, the Frenzy Blade. The Frenzy Blade is more than enough to get you to 50 out of 60% cap. And 50 out of 60% is pretty decent, honestly. You're getting, uh, what? 5 sixths, <laughs> if that means uh, anything. 5 sixths uh, of, the, of the attack speed uh, cap with just one legendary power. Come on, vote. But yeah, I don't see this as a build for pushing. I see this as a build just if someone wants to mess around with attack speed, with basic attack. But hopefully the developers change it and make it a build that ends up becoming fun. Because a zealot right now is not fun. Unless it's casting speed zealot. They probably had that limit to attack speed uh, from long ago. And then eventually forgot to rework it. Damage with flamethrower car will be great, by the way. If I want my, my build to be train based build. But then that would be better on a, on a Bane build. But anyways, uh, let's collect some more rewards maybe. And the final few rewards of the day. I've, I've had fun leveling up this build, um, testing stuff, uh, and I found a lot of useful information. Uh, unfortunately, it was disappoint disappointingly useful uh, information. <laughs> Especially that uh, attack speed limit, which kind of ruined all my hopes in a Berserker uh, attack speed zealot kind of uh, playstyle. Absolute justice. I don't think they really intended this attack speed to be capped at 50. Because if the attack speed is capped at 50, why do we get one item with 37 attack speed? <laughs> and that just kind of, yeah, you're almost capping with just one item. <laughs> It is nice though. It it makes uh, it makes the the one affix uh, all the more useful. 
Do you have the list if the legendaries that works with uh, trains attacks? A list of the legendaries that work with train attacks? Well, uh, you can just see it in the legendarium. I mean, it's not a big list. It's not a big list. Things that work with train attacks, uh, let's just look at them. Shotgunner and shield car is train stuff. Uh, cosmic boots uh, is not train stuff. But uh, cosmic gauntlets is train stuff. But you also need to use a basic attack. Uh, actually, no, you don't need to use basic attack. Cosmic gauntlets wants you to use a melee attack. So hammer, spin, pound, spike drive, uh, and torque blast, uh, torque swing also work with cosmic gauntlets. So if you want those flame bursts, you don't need to be using basic melee attacks. You can just use um, hammer, swing, uh, hammer, spin, and something like that. Any any slammer skill uh, that's not uh, flying picks or blasting charge or lantern flash would work. Uh, another thing that works with flame stuff, uh, with uh, not flame stuff but train stuff, is doom pipe. And then the tenderizer. That's it. No more train stuff. Tenderizer, doom pipe, uh, cosmic gauntlets. Uh, uh, shotgunner blast, uh, shotgunner shield, and that's pretty much it. It's definitely in the realm master only list. It's in the realm master only list. Anything else that procs off of any hit, such as the stalactites uh, uh, of White Wolves Cave uh, Breaker, works with trains because it says on hit. It doesn't say on hit with uh, attack. Or basic attack, it's on hit. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's you or the train hitting. It's still gonna proc. So that works as well. Um, other things. Other things. Um, there's probably a bunch of other things. I mean, but yeah, if it's on hit, it should it should work. Yeah, if it says on hit and it doesn't specify like this hit with basic attack. If it doesn't specify basic attack or a specific skill or a specific uh, other thing like uh, skill attack or whatever. If it doesn't specify anything then, then it works with trains as well. And keep in mind trains are minions so Bane train again right now is the meta. Alright, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, tomorrow I need to make this video, this build video, probably would record some gameplay footage now uh, after the stream. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, Struck Club. Tomorrow expect me to play uh, Chronicon. I'm not gonna play it before tomorrow, not to spoil myself uh, some of the freshness of the first playthrough. Thanks for tuning in, keep it cool and until next time, uh, goodbye from me.